Yes, 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 yes. The score sheets are in. They are in Pilsner brewed with USO5 and unlagered. The other one, a farmhouse ale with Brett, with WLP648 to be exact. The Brett farmhouse ale, a Pilsner with USO5 unlagered. The Brett one, two row, Vienna malt, flaked oats, brew one, Naboil and Steve, a little Hugh Mellon. I use the Belgian 565 by, Dub, by White Labs and WLP648 for uh, secondary, or maybe, yeah, secondary. Pilsner was 1054, well, yeah. So standard gravity, IBU 36 standard. Uh, boil was Saws, 50, 26 minutes. And then I split it with 2124 and USO5. 2124 fermented warm, turned a little, had a little diacetyl in it, but it did clean up later, actually, oddly enough. I've heard that can happen. Um, and then that was it. I actually bottled it and within a week I submitted it. I remember in the tasting video I said, I thought, I think it was a little too cloudy and that might knock it, but I thought it tasted pretty good as is. I will link the original tasting video for these and the brew days in the description below along with the recipes in case anyone is curious. The farmhouse ale, I did not know what category to enter this in. I was struggling. I went back and forth between the wild ale. I went to farmhouse ale. I, I almost entered it and just do a regular Saison. Because it had a Brett Funk, but it wasn't intense. It wasn't sour either. The BJCP guides and the guy that they use said that it didn't have to be sour. So I was like, all right, well, I'll submit it. Hopefully it can get by. It was a tough submission. So um, they say multi earthy, uh, clear golden yellow, sweet malty up front, musty, mushroomy with slight tartness, medium body, moderate CO2. Not bad, but definitely odd. For me, the wild character is is too much on the funky and not enough on the dry earthy. So that, you know, I could see that. Yeah, it's pretty funky and mushroomy. I really like it though, but gave it a 30. Judge number two, funkiness subdued, little white head, good clarity, flavor, medium low malt. So a little bit of sourness, medium low bitterness, balance of sour. This guy has a thousand more sour. Thin body, it is thin a little bit. I'll give him that. This probably went down pretty low. Now, so overall impression is this is a wild ale, but barely. I was expecting more funkiness and sourness. This could be a base for our other experimentation, he says. He gave it a 26. Together, it combined for a 28. Pretty good. I mean, 28 is not bad. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, because this was a very difficult style to enter in because I wasn't trying to make a wild ale. I wasn't trying to make a Saison. It was that weird in between. So considering it was an in-betweener, you know, 30 or 28 is actually pretty solid. And I get everything they're saying. It is a little dry. It is a little thin. It's pretty funky. Um, it is earthy. It isn't sour. I mean, it is a tiny bit. But more mushroomy. Now, now that he said that, I do get that for sure. Now, what could I possibly get entering in a category that is notoriously extremely difficult to win? How would it do? not even following the guides of how to make a Pilsner. My glassware is a little dirty. Apologies, I always say that, but... Now, this is really clear up nicely. So in the tasting video, as I said earlier, it was a little cloudy. By the time it got to them, hopefully it looked like this. Let's do it. Aroma. Some hops in the nose, but style would like more, not more malt aroma, no off flavors. Look at that. Appearance, moderate head retention, not brilliantly clear. I didn't really ding me on that. He did ding me on that a little bit, but not bad. Flavor, rich malt sweetness that is mired by a sour aftertaste, which drifts into bitter astringency on the finish. Let's see if I get that. There's a little sour aftertaste. <laughs> just, just a tiny bit. Low carbonation results in weak mouthfeel, astringent finish. But then he goes on to say, the style need a rich needs a rich complex maltiness which you came very close to regrettable some sour tones distract from this but i gladly drink another bottle 35 out of 50. <laughs> scored a 35 with the uso5 that is amazing and no lagering i see the sourness a little bit that is interesting but a 35 this other guy malt aroma a little spicy hop aroma sauce they go like that like gold slightly cloudy mm. Not anymore. Malt flavor. Malt flavor that is balanced with a spicy hop flavor up front with a nice strong hop bitterness that moves up 
out the finish and lessens into the aftertaste with the bitterness almost gone. I didn't say anything about sour though. Medium body, low carbonation. This one has pretty high carbonation, but overall impression, tasty Pilsner with the distinct hot bitterness and aroma that is a bit too much. But this is a very good drinkable beer. Good job. 33 out of 50. It's got a 34 combined. I will take it. That is really good. It's close to actually being something where, not meddling, but I wasn't too far off, you know? If you're in a 38 range to 40, you could get a bronze. You could get to the next steps. That goes to show you, you don't have to follow the rules. You can make a very good Pilsner that's drinkable by BJCP judges' standards that they like using USO5 and unloggered. I want to use two row. I didn't even use Pilsner malt. So, you know, I got the alcohol level right and I, and I got the I used sauce and that was really it. That was the only thing really standard about this. So one of the reasons why I started this channel was just to give, have some fun brewing, you know, and give some advice if needed, but more to have fun. And it kind of shifted along the way in the last year or so where it got to a point where I just wanted to get weirder and kind of just break rules. You know, Brewlosophy definitely is one of those inspirations, honestly, that I started to go, wow, those guys are doing stuff that are blowing my mind, you know? Drastic stuff you should never do. And you go to a panel and no one can tell the difference. There can be some snobbiness in the homebrew community where if it has to be done exactly according to plan, and you, you know those guys. There's this whole concern or consideration of, of how things should be done. And it doesn't have to be that way. Constantly push boundaries, constantly challenge the homebrewers who are unwilling to even try something new or brew different, even for the same style. To me, I've always said a Pilsner is a Pilsner is a Pilsner. And what I mean by that is, is there really a good way to do it or a bad way? Can you really do it with USO5 or Lager Yeast? Does it make a difference? As long as you stick to some of the guidelines, I really think you can make something close to it. And that is proven by what I just did here. And I'm very, very happy I did this. I'm happy I submitted it into a homebrew competition. So I did submit two more beers recently. Um, my Rausch beer raw ale and do a Rausch beer, but it's a raw ale with the, I just recirculated the wort through the mash. And the, and the other one was my American, was uh, my stout that I sanitized everything with whiskey. <laughs> and I actually entered it as an American porter. When I broke down all the parameters, I sat with Sarah and we tasted, the, we tasted it and we broke down what it fits best in. And American porter just, I think, fit the parameters the best. Again, I want to see if I can get away with it. Can I score well entering a whiskey sanitized beer? and a raw uh, Roush beer, which is a weird way of you and doing the mash too. So yeah, we'll see what that does. Stay tuned for that. These take a while before I get the papers back. That could be like two months from now. But uh, you know, I'll do a video on that once I get the full results in. Now, before I end off, people always comment about this. Well, not people, three or four. And I always never say it because I didn't go to the college. <laughs> but I will say it now, go Cougs. My fiance Sarah's parents met at, in Washington State and they're huge Cougar fans. And so I, I've gone a couple games of theirs. So they're ranked eight right now. That's insane, it's amazing. Go Cougs. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for more. Keep getting weird, keep pushing the boundaries and I'll see you guys next time.